Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for this video. Today we're gonna to talk about how to trim around a chain link fence. And over the years I've kind of come up with a few ways that it works best for me. And so I made a video about this years ago and to be honest with you, it didn't get very many views. So I thought, hey, today let's go over that one more time. There's a whole lot of new people watching the channel now. So if you have a fence, uh, you probably know that it's not too much fun to trim around all the time. There are a couple different solutions or things that you can do to kind of maybe permanently fix not having to trim around it. But some of those things I don't personally like as much. So let's talk about all that stuff today and show you kind of what I do around my chain link fence. So you can see this fence line here, I have not trimmed up against it, but even when I do, all this stuff up in between here is still gonna be left there. So we need to do something with that so that it looks nice and clean. Some people actually like to spray Roundup in here and this little section so that the grass doesn't grow in there. And I don't know if I can even say that word on the internet now without uh, getting a whole bunch of hate here, but the truth of it is is that really that product does work for certain things like this And if you're using it properly personally, I don't see a problem with that But it's up to you what I don't like about that is that you just tend to see a big dead mark there for a while And then you still have to maintain and kind of keep going because weeds will start to come in or because I have Kentucky bluegrass this thing is still gonna continue to want to push and push and push and spread and it will eventually spread through there. So what I did, honestly, when this fence was new, is I took some shingles, and if you actually make them wide enough, which these are not quite wide enough for what I would like, I was able to pick up this fence line and slide this under, and if you had it about maybe this wide or so, you could kind of naturally suppress all of that grass under there, and of course this kind of heats up and it just, it, gets hot during the summer too and would just basically kill everything that was underneath it. So that was an option, but what happened was I didn't really cut these to be wide enough and over time, as I said, no matter what, if you have something on the ground here, bluegrass is gonna find a way to spread up across it and that's what's happened. And so right now, I can just barely move that fence, but it's grown into here so much that I can't do much with it cleared out a spot now and if you actually look down in here the shingle is still there so it did work I just did not cut a wide enough piece and now that I'm years into this fence it is just so thick the grass has grown over it so much that I would really have to do some digging to kind of dig all of that stuff out so I just haven't dealt with that at this point and I'll show you what I do instead with my trimmer so this is my Hitachi trimmer and before all of you go and say, oh, this isn't a professional trimmer and all those things. You can have your opinion on whatever trimmer you want to use. I don't really care. For me, being pretty short, and I've just always gotten used to these kind of lightweight curved shaft trimmers, especially the gas-powered ones, I see no problem with it. I have no issue cutting pretty much anything. I'm not going out and doing a whole lot of crazy brush cutting or anything like that. I'm just trimming my yard. So this thing is so lightweight that the balance just feels really right for me and so I've tried many of the straight shaft trimmers before. I actually have a Milwaukee one, the battery powered one, and there's nothing wrong with that. It works. But for me, being the height that I am and the way that it, everything feels, I just like this trimmer and I like the balance of it and I'm able to really control it well. So whatever you want to use is up to you, but I just wanted to give that explanation before you say, oh this trimmer is complete crap. Really, it works fine. The first thing that I do is go right along the fence line and trim just like I normally would without tearing the actual string into the fence line as much as possible. So you'll get better at this over time once you get a fence and you'll kind of get a feel for your trimmer and how far it needs to stay away from there. You can start moving pretty quickly then once you feel comfortable with it, but there's not a major problem with hitting the fence line there, but of course you will tear up your string sometimes and you're trying to minimize just any damage to the fence. So I go along each side trimming as close as I can to the actual chain link without kind of tearing into it. Okay, a couple important things to note as well is what direction you go with the trimmer. So on mine, I actually want to move from left to right because of the way that the head spins. If you're using a straight shaft trimmer, most likely it's spinning in the opposite direction and you're going to want to move from right to left. It's another reason why I haven't switched too much on trimmers is because my brain has been programmed so much to go in a certain direction just feels natural to me and so I just have been kind of stuck in my ways there. So what I did here 
is remember that I need to move from left to right with my trimmer. And so when I'm going throughout my yard and once you learn your yard, you'll understand kind of what patterns to go through and you'll do that same thing every time. And also you could just go ahead and hack through this thing as much as you wanted to. Uh, you could just kind of go slow and hack through it with your string and it would eventually get all of this grass cleaned out and it would look clean. But you're probably going to go through a lot of string and it just is not going to be very nice on the fence as well. So this is the method that I use to get all of those little things cleaned up without doing too much damage and without going through so much string. From there what I'm going to actually do is go in reverse. So before I was moving left to right, now I'm going to move right to left, putting my trimmer right up against that chain link and just barely kind of having the trimmer over idle. You'll get a feel for this too. You don't want to go too fast or you'll break the string, but as you move in reverse and you put the trimmer in between the fence line there, the string is going to kind of wrap around those pieces of the fence line and it's going to cut everything in the middle of there. And as long as your trimmer is actually kept at a low enough idle and you're moving slowly through there, you're not going to break too much string. Now every once in a while you'll break a little bit, but it's not a big deal. But for the most part, compared to any other method I've had instead of hacking into the fence or anything like that, this method works the best to just kind of barely go in reverse of the first one that you did and just keep it at a low idle and you'll be able to cut all that stuff in between the fence line. After that, if you want to fine tune things, you can go back in the left to right motion with a curved shaft or again, all of this is going to be opposite if you're using a straight shaft for the most part. Check your actual head, you can just watch what direction it's going in. But for me and for most curved shaft trimmers, they're going to be moving left to right to cut the best. So what I'm doing today is just going through one more time on each side with a normal pass, not going in between the fence line, but just cutting right up against the fence, cleaning everything up. And from here, there's a major difference in the way that it looks now with very minimal effort. So let's look at this side now. Not trimmed. Trimmed. So you can definitely tell a difference here. Of course we have that side over there is not trimmed. This side over here is done so you should be able to tell pretty easily visually how much better it looks up against the fence line. I will say as well that this was pretty overgrown for me. It was probably around two weeks or so maybe of time frame when I had not trimmed this. I had mowed a couple times, but I hadn't gotten to the trimming. But I will say if you keep up with this, if you do your trimming every time that you mow and you trim in between that fence line, so you'll normally have just one pass going back through the actual trimming of the fence line going in reverse there and it'll be easily done and you won't have to do too much work. So keep up with it. It makes it easier to just keep up with things if you continually do this and you don't let things get too overgrown. So I hope that gave you a little explanation on a few things you can do with a chain link fence to actually trim through there easily. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time. Right, I dug this out just a little bit more here so you could see what I was talking about with the shingles. So you can see they're still there, still intact, but just didn't put a thick enough, wide enough layer in there. So what I would do is this is just an old piece here. This is not even as wide as I would go. I'd probably go a little bit wider than this. But when the fence is new or you don't have the grass grown all around it, you should be able to get this under here. Just like that. And then of course this is eventually going to start growing over top of here like I said, but if you keep it pretty trimmed and you kept a wide enough piece in there, it would last you for quite a while. So that's another option that I did try once and I just didn't have the pieces big enough.